get into it. Drake May working during his break from the team back home in North Carolina, mm. but he plans to work with longtime NFL coach Clyde Christensen at their alma mater at UNC. Clyde Christensen is a name you want to know because this guy has been around some of the greats in the game. Spent a long yeah. time as an assistant head coach, offensive coordinator, quarterback coach, and wide receivers coach with the Indianapolis Colts. So you know who he worked with there. Peyton yep. Manning yep. before he left for the Broncos. And also Andrew Luck starting in 2012. He also was a quarterback's coach for Tom Brady when he won a Super Bowl with mm. the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Okay, Manning. Brady, wow. full stop there. Andrew Luck, and now he's working with Drake May. Obviously, the question I would say is, why do you like this? Do you like this? You do. <laughs> yes. But what does it say about Drake May to be smart enough to reach out to a guy like this with the experience he has yeah. and to want to work with him in the offseason? This is a rookie taking the work ethic serious yeah. and going to the best there can be to improve him as a passer. Listen, I'm going to give credit to him, Drake May, and the Patriots. This feels collaborative, George. Like, think of how far we've come. Let's have a cheers to that. You got your water over there? Let's cheers this because – How did you know? I was just taking a swig. This isn't uh, – cheers, my brother. This we need, isn't – We need some champagne. We're, we're, this is no, like, snake oil salesman and Alex Guerrero. <laughs> well, Alex that, Guerrero was never a quarterback's coach, though. No, no, no. But hear me out. Okay. This isn't like – a snake oil salesman that the quarterback wants to work with this guy and the team's not on board and it's not franchise approved and the coach is pouting. There's none of that. Like this is a guy who's familiar with the Patriots, mm -hmm. familiar with the Colts, familiar mm -hmm. with the Bucks, mm -hmm. familiar with some of the greatest quarterbacks this game has ever seen and Manning and Brady. And if he had played longer, Andrew Luck, I mean, like, there's no lose here. This yeah. is fantastic news. And honestly, I say it's also collaborative because I feel like the team said, hey, make sure you work on X, Y, and Z with Drake. Like, this is great. And here's the other part of this, George. Training camp's a month away, yeah. right? I mean, good for all of us. Good for Drake May. Good for the Pats. Good for us in the media. Good for the fans. Football is right around the corner. And this kid is getting ready to go. And I'm going to tell you something. With all the reports we're hearing of Drake May, with the way he's working on his game this offseason, we know that will extend through camp. He's going to be ready to start sooner than either one of us think that he actually will. Mm -hmm. And that's a great thing, George. It all is. Right. I like that. What jumped out to me, and this is a Clyde Christensen interview, in early May, yep, and his quotes about Drake May saying he's great, and you put him in the same sentence as Peyton Manning and Tom Brady, which people roll their eyes at. Yeah, this is a guy that's smart, and he said why, and it was, but he processes information extremely well, a lot like Peyton. That alone, period, stop right there. I am sold. Yeah, because if you like his processing, to me, that was his biggest area of growth of need that he has to grow. Yeah, coming out of college into the NFL, his processing. And his footwork. We know the emphasis the Patriots are putting on his footwork, whether in shotgun, whether under center, working on his drops. That's all we've seen drill into his head all throughout rookie minicamp and the offseason. But the processing is why I think it'll take so long for Drake May to become the starter. But if Clyde Christensen sees that, yeah. and you think of these coaches with this experience, they're not just going to throw that comparison away. They're going to pump up their guys. They're going to talk highly of them. But he could have just said... I love Drake's May's processing. He's getting knocked for that. I think right. it's a lot better than people give him credit for because think about what he dealt with through the bad offensive line, bad receiving group, and yeah. a new offensive coordinator in UNC. No, 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 no. He says he reminds me of Peyton because of his processing. Peyton effing Manning. Yeah. I love hearing that about Drake May coming from Clyde Christensen. With a guy with his rapport and his history in the NFL and his reputation – he wouldn't want to ruin it just to boost Drake May, but he puts him there. Then he says he has a humbleness and a humility like Tom that players play for him. Mm. You have processing like Peyton Manning and leadership like Tom Brady. And you have an arm like Justin Herbert and the athleticism like Justin Herbert. I love this all about Clyde Christensen. And for him to say this about Drake May, and for him to go after getting this praise and take this break from the team and want to work out with him is huge to me. Because this is a kid, and I've said it, we, we went on this, we spoke about Foxborough Rush. 
hearing quotes from Hunter Henry, hearing quotes from David Andrews, talking about what they've said about him and its work ethic, its humility that surrounds Drake May, who is so talented, but it's a kid that knows he hasn't done anything yet and is willing right. to work at it. Right. That's what I love about this. Yeah, you know. And I'm not, dude, he's not Peyton. He's not Tom. I know. But if I'm saying that, because I know you're about to say that, yeah. but I'm saying that a guy like Clyde Christensen's been around football, he's a lifer. He recognizes it. Exactly. And the, the coaches like that, they don't just throw those names around. For sure. And he knows, he knows Drake is no Peyton, but he's saying, hey, this is what I've seen him, the processing like Peyton Manning. Yeah. And even if it's Peyton Manning coming out of college, we didn't have the best rookie year. Well, but it's Peyton Manning coming out of college. It's what you want. But the humility and leadership of Tom Brady, man, that, those are intangibles. Th those, those are. Those are intangibles that you want in your franchise quarterback. I was thinking of the processing like Peyton Manning as more from a standpoint of the fans and certainly myself, who has been banging the drum for Drake May to start sooner than later. You want him starting week negative five. Listen, I'll be honest with you. I'll Yeah, I'll take him to start the season. Like, I'm cool with that. I know that's not going to happen. Never and know. so my official prediction's week eight. But I do. You're right. Like, I'll, I want him starting from camp, preseason, regular season on. But thinking of Manning and his processing – you know, his rookie year, George, at, I don't know if it's been broken since, but at the time, I know, I remember, he set a rookie record for the most interceptions thrown. This is Peyton bleeping Manning we're mm -hmm. talking about. Mm -hmm. And he was an absolute stud in college. And I love Drake May. But Drake May couldn't wash Peyton Manning's car in college, okay? Like, Peyton Manning at Tennessee. I like when that they, censorship. When they didn't play Florida, Peyton Manning was unreal. Um, so, you know, I, I just, I, sometimes I, I pump my brakes on things like that yeah, for myself I because I hear these quotes. I'm like, Oh my God, he has processing like Peyton and humility, like Tom and just it, physically he's probably closer to Andrew Luck. So it's like this guy, but you know, we do have to be patient here because Peyton Manning struggled out of the shoot. We know it took Tom a while to catch on literally and get a chance to play. I guess in a way, like, I'd almost rather him compare him to Andrew Luck across the board because that guy, day one. I'll take it. I mean, he willed the Colts to the playoffs, and they were a mess. So, you know, I, I want Drake May to be the best Drake May, though. You know what I mean? Like, I, I get all the comparisons and all that's great. Yeah, I like that. But I want – Drake May has a lot of unique gifts that, that makes him who he is. And the first thing that comes to my mind as a big fan of his at UNC is I saw him running for his life a lot. Yep. And I saw him running for his life enough to know dude can boogie. He can dip. He can get out of the pocket and roll out on you. But I don't necessarily want to see that with the Patriots. I want to see design runs. I want to see we're running with purpose, with mm -hmm. intention. That's what I want to see from Drake May. That comes down to play calling. And it comes down to something you always talk about, which is an offensive line. So we'll see. Yeah. My gut is he'll probably be running for his life as well in year one. So a lot of the gifts and the traits that Drake May has, I don't even know if we're really – we'll see flashes, but I don't know if we're going to see them uh, as consistently as we could if he had the offensive line, George, if he had at least one bona fide weapon. Yeah, you want to talk Andrew Luck, he's got to talk offensive line. Right. And how the Colts killed him out right. there. Right, that's what but I mean. I looked at during his time in Indy, quarterbacks coach 2012 to 2015. Yeah. So, and offensive coordinator and assistant head coach 2008 starting. Peyton Manning from 2008 to 2010, he averaged 4,400 passing yards, 31 touchdowns, 15 interceptions wow. per 17-game stretch under Christensen. Obviously, he was only playing 16 games. Sure. Andrew Luck from 2012 to 2015. All those first three seasons of him in the league, yeah. full 16-game slate. He averaged 4,300 4, yards, 30 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. Wow. If you get that type of pace from Drake May, whatever amount yeah. of games he plays, yep. but that average of touchdowns per game, yep. cut down on the turnovers, of course. But if Clyde Christensen got that out of Peyton Manning and Andrew Luck, who also, Peyton Manning, Andrew Luck, Two sure be can't miss, weren't going to miss quarterback Absolutely. prospects. Yep. We know Tom Brady, 199th pick, gem of the draft, 
That's wasn't right. great his first few years developed. And by the time he got to Christensen, he was a refined piece. But how Christensen points out Peyton Manning's processing... Because, yes, he points out the leadership of Tom Brady. And in a way, too, for himself, he's not taking credit for, you know, developing Tom Brady. He knows what Tom was. But he's saying, this is what I see in Drake May. Right. For that kid to want to be around him, I just love it. In Christensen, again, I'm going to the article in early May, said this. I think he does have that awareness of what's going on around, which is, which is huge. When do you jump on the offensive line? When do you just try to build them up? When do you yeah. give the receivers a kick in the butt? Yeah. When do you hug them? He does have an act for that, an awareness of when and where and how, and that's huge. Mm. He's a kid that's smart. He's yeah. heady. He's a quarterback. You know what all that says? He is a leader. Yes, he is. Drake May is working with the same guy that worked with Tom Brady. Drake May is working with the same guy that worked with Peyton Manning. And he sees parts of their greatness in him because this is a kid with his ceiling, with his ceiling, mm -hmm. can be a Justin Herbert can be an Aaron mm -hmm. Rodgers out there. Yeah. You get him on the movement, which could help out this offensive line a lot. Yep. With the bad offensive line, you get him moving on bootlegs, get him moving in the pocket. It buys them time. Can he get the ball out in under three seconds and under 2.8 seconds, really? Drake May can do that. Working with this guy when he's away from the team, wanting to improve his That's game, right. seeking him out. Now, there are the connections between the two of them going to North Carolina and at UNC. Christensen was around Drake May when he was there with the Tar Heels. Right. But still wanting to go back to him and learn from him, I mean, this is just huge. And this is what you want from well, your franchise quarterback. This is what you want. I know Tom and and Drake have talked and, and have been talking. There's communication there. I I hope, and I'm sure he is, but I hope that Tom is is talking to him from a place of sort of when Tom was a rookie. I think sometimes as, as OGs and as veterans – you know, we tend to give advice. I, I can speak on this because I, I have a lot of young broadcasters that come to me for advice, too. And I try to always, George, like put myself in in their shoes when I was that age, as opposed to talking to them from a place of now. And so what I mean by that is, yeah, sure. Now Tom can look back and say, do this, this and this. But you, you need to sort of look at it from Drake's standpoint, and when Tom was a young rookie. And I bring this up because, as you say, Drake appears to be a natural leader. Cool. But some of his leadership qualities right now at this stage of his career, to be honest, I'm not trying to be mean, is you just got to show up, keep your mouth shut, and put in the work. That is leadership for now. That's Jacoby, what he does. Jacoby Brissett's the starter. Yeah. Jacoby Brissett is a veteran. He's the rah-rah, hey, guys, this is what we're going to do. He is the leader right now. The best way for Drake to lead is through example. Come in, don't hot shot, which it doesn't appear as though he is. He, he seems humble, and you just said that, that, that Coach Clyde said. But come in, be humble, do your work, put your head down, and just play your position, play your role, stay in your lane. Mm -hmm. When it's your time and you take over QB1, then lead outwardly more so. Then be more verbal. And I hope that Tom's sort of in his ear for that because Tom talks about that when he was young, how he wasn't getting reps, George. And a coach told him every rep you get, whether it's three or four, go in there and act like it's a Super Bowl. And he took that literal and prepared that way. But, George, I use that example because he wasn't getting the reps, but that is leading by example. No one knew who the hell Tom Brady was, but they knew – when he got in for however handful of reps he gets in for, he's going to kill it. He's going to be a pro. He's going to be dialed in. He's going to be locked in. He's going to know his shack. That's what Drake May has to do, in my opinion. Don't, don't be too overly. I think sometimes rookies come in, they pop off at the mouth. They're like, I'm the man. I don't get those vibes from Drake, but I hope that he just comes in and he's quiet and he leads by example. And then when it's his time, then give us that full leadership experience. It's big because he's the leader of this rookie class. Yeah. And he's coming in with offensive linemen. Yeah. Robinson, Caden yeah. Wallace. Obviously, Jalen Polk, Javon yep. Baker. Receivers, yep. Exactly. Lead by example for them. Learn how to lead by example yeah. when the next rookie class comes in. Because by next year, year two, you're the starter, dude. That's right. We can say whatever. We could, till we're blue in the face, talk about how many games he started as a rookie. And we will. He is starting, guarantee, week one of year two. Absolutely. He is a starter. Yep. Hit the ground running, learn how to lead now.